Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Keith Lee 197 auto ranging microvolt digital multimeter. I think this one is from about 1990s. If I read in the manual and the different pages or information I can find, that is more or less the age or the release for this uh, unit. It is a um, five and a half a digit multimeter. And the microvolts, of course, comes from its very high resolution due to all those uh, digits. And you can see here in volts, 200 millivolts a full range. And with all those digits, this will give you a um, one microvolt resolution in this range. And of course, 10 microvolt and so on, right? I will um, show you here the different resolutions in the different ranges. So that is uh, quite amazing. So I think we will find a very good voltage reference inside this uh, unit. Yeah, I really hate it when people write on front panels. I mean, please don't do that. And yeah, since this is an LCD meter, uh, there is a classic problem with LCD panels and uh, the interconnects down to the circuit board uh, behind it. And this is how they fix this by pressing in a little piece of metal here and then it pushes down, causing all sorts of funny things. I hope I can fix this so it's not looking like that. This also creates some scratches. Here you can see this is not nice. Not a nice fix. And yeah, it needs a little bit of cleaning as well. But maybe we should just try and power it up the way it is and see where are we. So here on the back, we find a few switches. This is the display backlight. Wow, so we've got some LEDs or something in there we can turn on and off. That's a little bit interesting. And uh, calibration. So if we look in here, we find some secret switches. So with it is of course in disabled at the moment, but when enabled, there is a um, special calibration uh, feature you need to follow in the in the manual. It's really uh, good explained in the manual how you perform. It's all software calibration, and then we have of course the line voltage, and it is correctly set. So I feel we can continue powering this up. All right, so I just, no, I did not. So let's turn on mains and it is using 0 0.6 watts in power off mode. So I believe this is a low voltage switch after the transformer. And yes, it seems to be live and uh, working. So this is, it's, uh, I would expect it to have a very high input impedance. So that is probably, oh, we also see, so those are some weak digits as well. So we have a, oh, and when I push the glass, we create some contact. So there is a, there is a reason for this. That is a bad uh, contact. And ohm, amps. Yeah, we got some weak here, yeah. AC. It seems to be, uh, it seems to be working. There's so far only this little mechanical issue. And I will try and open and figure that out if I can fix that. Maybe I will check if it's accurate or not. So this is uh, 10 volts and this shows us the resolution in the 20 volt range, 0 0.1 millivolt of uh, resolution. So that is uh, really nice and fine. I just uh, give it uh, about 10 volts and it is very, very close. Let's see, yeah, I'm, I am only uh, 
millivolts too high at the moment. I just turned on some stuff here, so I think we definitely need to wait a lot longer before we can really say who is the most accurate here. So now we're inside, and uh, that will be the little display module. And you can see it's mounted with those little plastic thingies. And what happens is this piece, all those, they kind of bend a little bit and release the display. So you have less and less pressure over the years until you have a lost connection. And that will be a little high voltage AC transformer for the back light. It's not LED. And when I turn this on, let's have a little look. Can you? Okay. We can barely see the light. So the idea is you can turn this on if there's complete darkness, then it makes probably sense to use it. But otherwise, it's not making a lot of sense. And those uh, LCDs, they are quite easy to read. It's nice, fine size. But you see, we have some connection to the glass issues. So I was able to get the whole thing out of the cabinet. It is, of course, nicely shielded. And there's a little metal spring here on the bottom side of the circuit board that will connect to the shield. And there's also a little inner shield here. We've got some... What is that? 63B21. Hmm. 6805 microprocessor. And then the EEPROM for that. So it's definitely a little CPU software controlled. And this is also why it is completely software calibration. So we got a little memory chip, probably this one here. Or that one. Okay, that's probably RAM, isn't it? Well, very interesting. My idea is to try and get this uh, display board all the way out and see if there's any way I can fix this annoying uh, weak digits. So that was uh, quite easy. Just uh, three screws and then you pull out the entire display unit. You don't need to unhinge these little clickers here. I kind of did that because I didn't see this piece of plastic here is not a part of that front plastic. So we've got three of these on the top and uh, there'll be notes to myself so I know what to do here. And then the, the wider piece of plastic goes up as well because I know what's going to happen is probably forget how to put these things together right so it's always good to note how to align stuff so here is how this is all done well see this uh, dude sticks in a dirty rusty screwdriver to put in this little piece of metal I mean who would do that? And look at the scratches made. Oh, that is so, so sad. And um, that will be the contacts on the circuit board. They are tinned really nice and fine. I'll try and clean these a little bit extra so they're super duper nice and perfect. And then there is a um, Another little thing I need to note to myself, and that is the glass is, see, we got a little space here on the right side, but it is all the way to the left side of the plastic. That is also important to, uh, to remember, because I want to take all this out, and we have these little black rubber contacts in here, and they consist of conductive um, plastic, and then some plastic again in layers 
this way you can create a contact from the circuit board to those contacts up here see yeah, here you go can you see those lines in the glass that's actually um yeah some conductive coating on the glass that goes all the way into the display and this is what you want to connect to so you cannot rub this or remove these of course when you're trying to clean it that will not be good so down here in this little piece of plastic where this cardboard piece is supposed to go i added a few layers of tape just to uh, create this little extra press it seems like we need and i also cleaned this the contacts and i also cleaned the circuit board so now I'll try and assemble just the display and see if that one is alive before I assemble everything. So after a little assembly of the display and a little pre-test here, I am happy to announce that the problem is gone. Look at the contrast in all of the digits. Super, super nice and fine. And this is how you fix displays like this. All right. Now I can proceed with the rest of the testings. I'm really impressed about the build in, in this unit. Everything is just so nice and beautiful. Got, of course, a little bit of special relays for some of the ranges. And all those ceramic laser calibrated resistors we see all over the place. So you've got three of these. Well, that's of course for all the different ranges to make it accurate. Also got some really nice and special op amps. Like this one, the AD542. Why is it always out of focus? So that one. And... Uh, yeah, we got some more right here. Those op amps down there. The TLC twenty seven L two. Oh yeah, here. The AD six three seven. That will be an RMS to DC converter. So that's of course for the AC ranges. I believe what we see right here is. The voltage reference using an op amp, a little transistor coupling, and two Zener diodes. So that I think is the voltage reference area. And uh, yeah, the rest is just uh, the normal stuff, full of op, op amps. <laughs> really, a lot of different types of op amps as well. I mean, everywhere we look, we find new <laughs> op amps and different op amps types. Oh yeah. That will be the 10 amp current shunt. See, no resist, uh, no fuses or anything. The red and the black wire. That's just the 10 amp range. That resistor here. That will be the 2 amp range all the way to the left, and then some of the other current ranges in the other half of that resistor. So it's really full of uh, special components, definitely. The circuit board is uh, yeah just beautiful. There's a, some sort of a missing plug-in module, and uh, look at the tracks, the power and some signal tracks close together, and that is also uh, yeah they're telling us they you know what they're doing. I think it was really cool with this. 6805 cpu and all that yeah i kind of like that it's uh fully software so i am really happy about how it all went with this meter i was also able to get this uh, permanent marker away so uh, thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you soon again bye bye